So some diabetic medications can be really dangerous during exercise. So they can cause low blood sugar during exercise, which sometimes can be life-threatening. I'm a primary care sports medicine doctor, and in this video, I'm going to show you how medications help to control your diabetes, what medications can cause low blood sugar, and finally, advice on how to make sure that doesn't happen. Let's get started. So I'm also going to link a video at the end to help you get started exercising right away. So let's spend a few minutes understanding medications for type 2 diabetes. So there are two types of oral medications that we commonly prescribe. So there are some that increase insulin secretion, while others work in different ways without impacting insulin secretion. Luckily, we only use one class of this insulin secreting group, and that group is called a sulfonuria, and the medications in this class include glipicide, glimipiride, gliburide, or glibenclamide. So these are all generic names for this medication. So I want you to take your medication list and see if you're on these medications. Sometimes you'll see the trade name and you have to find the generic name of that particular medication that you're taking. For example, here it might say Glebatix, but the generic name is Glibenclamide, which belongs to the sulfonuria group. You can always Google the trade name in order to find the generic name. Since these medications that belong to the sulfonuria group secrete insulin, these medications can increase the risk of low blood sugar during exercise. So you have to be careful when you take these medications. Now let us now discuss other medications that are commonly used to treat type 2 diabetes. Generic drug metformin is a common prescription. When people have insulin resistance, insulin is not able to work properly. Normally, insulin acts like a boss to the liver, telling it when to release glucose. But in insulin resistance, insulin is not the boss. That means the liver starts pouring sugar into the blood. The metformin stops that from happening. Generic drug pyoglitazone improves insulin sensitivity which improves the absorption of blood sugar into the muscles. Neurogenic drugs like citagliptin, linagliptin, tragenta, liraglutide, semaglutide, they all increase the hormone GLP-1. Some medications that are listed now will directly increase GLP-1 hormone and some increase GLP-1 indirectly. GLP-1 actually decreases appetite by slowing the emptying of the stomach. Finally, STLT2 inhibitors. Some of the generic names are canagliflozin, dabagliflozin, so these are type of medications that work on the kidneys. When a person's blood sugar rises above 180 milligram per deciliter, sugar starts spilling into the urine. The kidneys tries to reabsorb some of the sugar, thereby increasing blood sugar. This medication prevents them from happening so that a person starts to excrete blood sugar. This way, the blood sugar levels drop. When sugar spills in the urine, it also brings a lot of water with it, which might increase the risk for dehydration. So you have to be careful when you exercise under hot, humid conditions if you're taking this medication. Let us now discuss insulin. Sometimes people with high blood sugar are prescribed insulin. Although type 2 diabetes is caused by high insulin resistance, high blood sugar can sometimes shut down the pancreas, making it act like type 1 diabetes, almost like insulin deficiency. So I'll give you an example of one of my patients who was able to wean off insulin completely. So this was an older patient who was admitted for diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a rare complication in type 2 diabetes. So when I started seeing him, I started him on insulin because I was worried about if he would develop a DK again. But then, as he started making those lifestyle modifications and stuff, we were able to wean off insulin completely, and now currently he's just on one medication to help control his diabetes. So there will be a period when you're on insulin to keep your blood sugar under control as you start incorporating a healthy lifestyle. Since exercise can improve insulin sensitivity, if someone doesn't adjust his insulin during exercise, he can go into low blood sugar. As of now, there are only two types of medications that can cause low blood sugar. So one are the medications that belong to the sulfonuria group, the other is insulin. Follow these tips to avoid low blood sugar during exercise if you're taking those two types of medications that I mentioned above. Before you start working out, check your blood sugar level. If it's under 90 mg per deciliter, do the following. Eat around 15 gram of carbohydrates. One banana or one orange should be enough. This will raise your blood sugar levels quickly. If you're planning to do an hour of exercise at a good intensity, maybe like brisk walking or jogging, then I would recommend having one slice of bread with peanut butter along with one banana. Basically, you're aiming for 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates in total, which will make sure that it releases the blood sugar into your system slowly. If you're from India, you can do something similar, maybe one idli with sambar or chutney or one roti. So let's say your blood sugar is consistently less than 90 mg per deciliter before exercise. Then I would recommend discussing with the doctor to adjust your medication or maybe you should change your exercise timing. If your blood sugar is between 90 to 130 mg per deciliter, then I would recommend 10 mg of carbohydrate like half a banana. If you're going to do strength training exercise, then you don't need to take anything. If your blood sugar is more than 130 mg per deciliter, then you're all set. I hope this video is helpful. Don't postpone exercise. Start exercising today. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.